Rack Studios was first established by um, Mickey Most and it opened up in 1976. And it started with this room and Studio Two. And then in the mid 80s, they bought a bit more of the building and opened up Studio Three and Studio Four. Yeah, over the history of Rack, there's been some massive records done here. A lot of the hot chocolate stuff, Kim Wilde, which was published by Rack. Um, Vienna was done here. Uh, the Benz was done here by Radiohead. Uh, Take That Patience and that record was done here. Um, but yeah, there's been numerous massive records done over the history. Yeah, I think the ethos Mickey brought to the studio was, it was one of combined of professionalism, but also a homely feeling. Um, and that every, every studio has daylight, so you're feeling, you feel in contact with the world. Um, but you also feel that you can put your feet up and relax. And I think putting artists at ease is one of the sort of most easily forgotten things about the process of making a record. The setup at Rack is uh, there's four studios, there's two API rooms, a knee VR legend, an SSL room, and there's also two small writing rooms as well, um, which were spaces that were like empty before and we've brought them back to life to use them as extra space because we're getting so busy really. In each studio at Rack, we've got a Pro Tools rig and also Studio 1, 2 and 3 have 24 track tape machines and they're all still fully working. There's a few bits of gear that are considered reasonably rare at Rack. The APIs are the, the major selling point of, the, of these two rooms and these were installed in 1976 when the studio opened. And I think they're the only two current working ones in commercial studios in, in Britain. Um, we've got a few other bits and pieces of Fairchild 670 which is very rare. Uh, we have a Yamaha CS80 keyboard, which is also pretty rare. And lots, we have a large mic collection with quite a few vintage and rare mics in there. Uh, we have uh, three Valve 47s, um, two M50s, which they get used all the time. I think my favorite room to work in at Rack is Studio One. Uh, it's obviously, it's the biggest room here, but it just sounds killer for drums and probably say it's it's the best drum room in London if not I'm slightly biased but if not the world um, but yeah it's great there's great daylight in here and a great vibe in here and it's you almost feel like you're sort of on the Starship Enterprise with the wraparound console in here and being raised up above the studio floor um, so the desk in Studio One is uh, a 1976 API desk um, and it's a 48 channel desk um, with 32 channels that you can use for monitoring or you can split the desk in two and use it 24 mic preamps or 24 channels of monitoring um, and it's a great sounding board like awesome tight mid-range um, and yeah as I said it's one of the one of two or three in Britain in, in main facilities probably one of the biggest records um, done in studio one on this uh, board was the Benz um, and another interesting single that was done, Fairy Tale of New York, was done in, in Studio One as well on this board. The desk in Studio Two is another API. It has 24 mic preamps and 32 channels for monitoring. It's a slightly different desk um, uh, in that you can't split it. The mic preamps on one side are just uses mic pre and the other side is just for monitoring. Um, but another great sounding desk of the same vintage. The desk in Studio 3 is a Nii VR Legend um, and that's a reasonably new addition. I think we got it in about a year ago and that came out of Studio 2 in Abbey Road. And so yeah, there were a lot of great records made on it um, before it came from there and obviously coming from Abbey Road it was tip top condition and hopefully we'll have quite a few more years of service here. But it's nice that you have the contrast between being able to track and mix on a Neve in Studio 3 or being able to track and mix on an API in Studio One for a more sort of vintage vibe, I suppose. Uh, the last studio is Studio Four, which is a mix room, and that's got an SSL 4000 E Series console, which is a, a classic, famous mixing desk. Um, and it's yeah, great sounding board, um, great EQs on it, um, and we also have a vocal booth in that room as well, so we can do um, vocal overdubs and writing, which it gets used for a lot. Rack survived where so many other studios have closed, I think for a couple of reasons. One, the desks and the rooms that we've got here um, 
and to the quality of staff in the building. Um, and I think it's something that you can't really get anymore. If you need to record a string section, you need to record um, a full band, you need a large space, a large soundproofed, great sounding space to do it in. And I think that they've run the business really well. Um, and people search out racks specifically for the desks, the rooms, um, and the people that we've got here. I hope that the future holds for Rack more of the same. Uh, we've been really busy recently, and I think um, that the music industry is slowly turning a corner, and the fact that vinyl sales are the highest they've been for five years, and I think mainly selling to 25 to 30 year olds or under shows that there's a desire for higher quality music and I think people are going to start demanding more from their records and Rack's perfectly set up for that and I think, well I hope that budgets will sort of stay the same or be going up over the next few years and allow more bands to use places like Rack um, before there's not many of us left. <laughs>